Hey everyone, I've decided as of today that I will start recording a lot of my day-to-day -day, uh, thoughts as I go through kind of this journey of generative AI. I've been talking about AI as of this uh, time for more than four months, going on five out of the year. And there's really a lot of insights that I picked up just in the last two months alone. So recently, IBPAP or the IT and Business Processing Association of the Philippines, held this leadership development series in partnership with AAP. And the goal was to discuss how to prepare organizations for AI and analytics talent. So in this event, the executive director of AAP, Sherwin Pelayo, discussed the Delta Plus framework for analytical readiness. And actually, Delta Plus pretty much forms the basis for the AAP's organizational maturity model. And this was quickly followed by a panel of IBPAP CEOs moderated by AAP's own president, Michelle Alarcon. So the link to that event or details are in the description. So Delta itself is a framework coined by Tom Davenport. It stands for Data, Enterprise, Leadership, targets, and analysts. So in the right hands, Delta Plus can be a very powerful tool in navigating organizational change and transformation. Uh, but I think for a leader to be really effective with Delta Plus, you have to relate on, uh, you have to relate to it on a personal level. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I call myself a CEO and a CTO. And if you read the literature, mixing these two jobs is a completely bad idea because they're very different jobs. I did not choose to be both. It just happened by necessity. I, I'm one of those people who started with a business uh, background. So I uh, studied finance and accounting. But over the years, I've just picked up data and technology on the job. And, and truth be told, I really never paid much attention to this until later. So after I'd been working for, you know, a little more than 20 years, I was tapped to do two things. One was to write, not take, write a master's degree in business analytics, co-authored it with a few people in AAB. And second was to organize and design a national training program for analytics, which most of you probably now know as uh, Project Sparta. And I have to admit at that time, it was very strange being tapped to do these things. I wasn't an academic, at least not yet. So why ask me about training? And I think over the years, I've come to accept this as some sort of a validation that what differentiates analytics from just mere reporting and even statistics is analytics is first and foremost an applied discipline. It's impossible to adequately teach data analytics from a very theoretical level. It has to be taught with practitioners. And this is pretty much the reason that the AP was formed back in 2018. So am I a CEO who codes or a coder who leads? I guess it depends on the event. Uh, but more seriously, if you go back to Delta, if you collapse Delta, the Delta Plus framework, you can collapse it into two dimensions. Leadership, particularly transformative leadership, and technology, especially data technology. So there's this urban legend. Once upon a time, Henry Ford, the Henry Ford, was asked whether he believed in market research. And, and to this, he replied, if I asked customers what they wanted, they would have asked for faster horses. And of course, you know, sometimes people these days debate whether Henry Ford in fact said that. But for me, it doesn't really matter. The, the point is that quotation perfectly captures the day-to-day -day grind of a leader working with data working with technology. A data-driven leader isn't just about having data. It's about knowing when to use data. So in my career, I've met a lot of companies across many industries 
some companies just get it. They get data, they get technology. But without transformative leadership, these companies quickly turn into toy kingdoms. You know, they have a lot of tools, they have a lot of licenses, a lot of software, but very little results to speak of. And then on the opposite boat are companies with very strong leaders, very deliberate management, but they may be nascent with data and technology. And from my experience, these companies often are lethargic with operations. They take longer than usual to get things done. Usually very toxic. Because without data, there's no objective standard. Everyone navigates based on gut feel, based on tradition. So these companies also tend to be quite political in nature. And uh, they may achieve things. Some of them are quite results-oriented, actually. But without data, they tend to achieve it at great cost or they take longer than, than usual. I'm sure some of you will relate to a root cause of a technology problem in the office. It's basically people not talking to each other, particularly the business people and the technology people. They can't seem to, to get it together. So, so the essence of Delta Plus, if you ask me, is data and leadership not in silos, not in isolation, but working together. And now let's talk about AI, especially generative AI. So again, I've been talking about AI for the better part of the year as of this uh, recording. And I've come to pick up many assumptions that are floating around re regarding AI, uh, some of which I think are legacy assumptions from the past and how people used to relate with AI. So the most popular assumption is that you need data to get started with AI because AI uses data. And I think this is only partly true. Um, yes, in the past, you had to gather a lot of data because you, you, you were pretty much training AI from scratch. Now, unlike the AI of the past, your average large language model, uh, GPT, already comes trained with data. So you can use it out of the box without any data gathering. You can use it to produce data. Uh, of course, you can always fine tune with data you already have, but honestly, the only barrier most companies have to adopting large language models is a mouse click. You just have to get on with it. Another assumption is that AI is uh, limited to automation of simple repetitive processes. Yes, you can certainly do that, but we also quickly forget that GPTs and you know LLMs were trained on a huge repository of digitized knowledge, pretty much the sum totality of the world's digital knowledge as of that point in time. They've read more books, websites, and posts than any living human being will ever read in their lifetime. So surely with that totality of knowledge, you can do more than just automate repetitive tasks, right? Can you use AI for planning? Can you use AI for brainstorming? We already know that AI can write essays. We already know that AI can create images. And more recently, AI can write code and correct code. So it's this last bit that's important. If Delta Plus is about data and leadership, where does AI sit? Where should AI sit? If data, being a data-driven leader is knowing when to use data, when does a leader use AI? So to this, I'm 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 actually going to leave this point on an open note. Because I think the pages for this chapter are still black. The stories are still being written. Your stories and your company's stories with data are yet to be written. And as for me, I have a very strong feeling that I may have to change my title very soon. Have a good evening, everyone.